All right, I'm going to leave two links for two videos in the text in the description box under this video. So inside the text box, this one is urgent warning, grid down, blackouts, communications down, and banks emptied, invasion from NWO Nemesis, December 4th. So she has a transcription here, but it's an auto transcription. It's so hard to read those because there's no punctuation. So um, I'll just leave links to the vid her video and the next one so that you can click on click on this and you can listen to it yourself. Same with this one by Gwendolyn Song, June 10th, 2020, because I was looking at the power grid. Um, so this one came up. Power grid warning, they will turn off the uh, turn off the lights. And again, it's a generated transcript. So uh, it, I'm not going to read that. You can listen to her video or you can try to read the transcript yourself. <clears throat> and then this one I'm going to read, which was from December 7th from Anno Domini 144K, The Enemy's Planned Nuclear Meltdown. Um, and like I shared in my previous video before, um, I think I lost, I think I lost my, I was telling you that when I had prayed about when destruction began, where it would hit first, and the Lord answered me and said, said, the Lord answered me when I asked where the destruction would begin, and he said, New York. <clears throat> and although that was that state was on my mind already due to the passage of the abortion law that they passed up to birth. Um, that's not why I thought it. The Lord gave me the answer in New York. It's the area, it is the area that his judgment will begin, but it won't stay there. It'll be, they'll, every area and Eventually, every continent of the earth will see judgments. Um, there are nine other states that are already, that already have no ban on abortion, even up to birth. So New York's not the most evil. <clears throat> it is appalling and without excuse. The Lord told me that people will reap what they sow. So if they sow death, they're going to reap death. Okay, and then I and then this video. I'll leave a link to this video. Because in it, I share four words from others that say the same thing about the East Coast needing to prepare um, for this to happen. All right, so back to Anno Domini's meltdown. <clears throat> in a dream vision, the Holy Spirit took me to the inside of a building that had, a giant, that had giant pipes and water chambers. I watched a man's gloved hand, hands place a waterproof box into a chute and slide it down into the water. The box was a bold medium blue color and shaped like a little suitcase. I did not know what was in the box or why I was led to watch it descend into the water. I asked the Holy Spirit what it was and he said, wait and see what I show you next. Then the Holy Spirit took me outside to an area of farmland and suburbs. I first saw wild geese fall out of the air to the ground and die. Then I watched farm horses collapse and die in the fields. I asked the Holy Spirit what was causing the animals to die, and he said, nuclear radiation. Then I realized that the former scene had taken place inside a nuclear reactor complex, and the radiation release had been no accident. The suitcase box had contained a device that had detonated. When I asked the Holy Spirit what would happen to the humans, he said, wait and see what I show you next. Then the Holy Spirit took me to a suburban neighborhood and placed me outside a single family home. Standing invisible in the spirit in the driveway, I watched a team of men and women in white hazard suits arrive to inspect the house with radiation detection equipment. The family's car had been parked outside during the nuclear disaster and the family was told the car was contaminated and they could never use it again. The garage door had been left open and all the items in the garage could not be touched or used. Then the team went indoors. The first room, a vestibule, was too contaminated to use and was cornered, cordoned off. Then the interior rooms were checked and deemed habitable for use. 
After the team handed the family a copy of its report, it moved to the other house next door. Here's a word, America. You have enemies within and without that will use all means necessary, including a nuclear meltdown to cause chaos and bring you to your knees. Pray against this form of attack that, is, that it be foiled. Repent and pray that you be spared this judgment. When I asked the Holy Spirit where this attack may occur, he gave me no specific place. Yet when I watched the geese and horses die, I sensed what I saw took place in the rural and suburban areas outside of New York City, either in New Jersey or up in the Hudson River. In fact, in a separate word of knowledge, the Holy Spirit told me the city of Ossining, New York, would be the epicenter of a nuclear attack. At the time I received this word, I assumed that Ossining would be bombed by an enemy's nuclear warhead missile that missed New York City, but now, seeing that the Indian Point nuclear plant is located less than 10 miles away from Ossining, I don't know if it's Ossining or Ossining, I can understand that the nuclear attack could be a meltdown. <clears throat> Amos 2, this is what the Lord says, For three sins of Moab, even four, I will not relent, because he burned to ashes the bones of Edom's king. I will send fire on Moab that will consume the fortresses of Kerath. Moab will go down in great tumult amid war cries and the blast of the trumpet. I will destroy her ruler and kill off all her officials with him, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. For three sins of Judah, and even four, I will not relent, because they have rejected the law of the Lord, and have not kept his decrees, because they have been led astray by false gods, the gods their ancestors followed. I will send fire on Judah that will consume the fortresses of Jerusalem. Judgment on Israel. This is what the Lord says. For three sins of Israel, even for four, I will not relent. They sell the innocent for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. They trample on the heads of the poor as the dust of the ground, as on the dust of the ground, and deny justice to the oppressed. Father and son use the same girl and so profane my holy name. They lie down beside every altar on garments taken in pledge. In the house of their God they drink wine taken as fines. Yet I destroyed the Amorites before them, though they were tall as the cedars and strong as the oaks. I destroyed their fruit above and their roots below. I brought you out of Egypt and led you for 40 years in the wilderness to give you the land of the Amorites. I also raised up prophets from among your children and Nazarites from among your youth. Is this not true, people of Israel, declares the Lord? But you made the Nazarites drink wine and commanded the prophets not to prophesy. Now then, I will crush you as a cart crushes when loaded with grain. The swift will not escape, the strong will not muster their strength, and the warrior will not save his life. The archer will not stand his ground, the fleet-footed soldier will not get away, and the horseman will not save his life. Even the bravest warriors will flee naked on that day, declares the Lord. Isaiah 26, 16-21 Lord, they came to you in their distress when you disciplined them. They could barely whisper a prayer. As a pregnant woman about to give birth, Rise and cries out in her pain, so were we in your presence, Lord. We were with child, we rise in labor, but we gave birth to wind. We have not brought salvation to the earth, and the peoples of the world have not come to life. But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the blood shed on it. The earth will conceal its, its slain no longer. Jeremiah 2, the word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember the devotion of your youth how as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured her were held guilty and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. 
Hear the word of the Lord, you, you descendants of Jacob, all you clans of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your ancestors find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, though a land of deserts and ravines, a land of drought and utter darkness, a land where no, no one travels and no one lives. I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich produce, but you came and defiled my land. This is just like what we did to America and made my inheritance detestable. The priests did not ask, where is the Lord? Those who deal with the law did not know me. The leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, following worthless idols. Therefore, I bring charges against you again, declares the Lord, and I will bring charges against your children's children. Cross over to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and observe closely. See if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its gods? Yet they are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. Be appalled at this, you, you heavens, and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Is Israel a servant, a slave by birth? Why then has, she, has he become plunder? Lions have roared, they have growled at him, they have laid waste his land, his towns are burned and deserted. Also the men of Memphis and Tephanes have cracked your skull. Have you not brought this on yourselves by forsaking the Lord your God? Why, when he led you in the way? Now why go to Egypt to drink from the Nile? And why go to Assyria to drink water from the Euphrates? Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. How evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Long ago you broke off your yoke and tore off your bonds. You said, I will not serve you. Indeed, on every high hill and under every spreading tree, you lie down as a prostitute. I had planted you like a choice vine of sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me into a corrupt wild vine? Although you wash yourself with soap and use an abundance of cleansing powder, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the sovereign Lord. How can you say I'm not defiled? I have not run after the balls. See how you have behaved in the valley? Consider what you have done. You are a swift she-camel running here and there, a wild donkey accustomed to the desert sniffing the wind in her craving. In her heat, who can restrain her? Any males that pursue her need not tire themselves. At mating time, they will find her. Do not run until your feet are bare and your throat is dry. But you said, it's no use. I love foreign gods and I must go after them. As a thief is disgraced when he is caught, so the people of Israel are disgraced. They, their kings and their officials, their priests and their prophets, they say to wood, you are my father, and to stone, you gave me birth. They have turned their backs to me and not their faces. Yet when they are in trouble, they say, come and save us. Where, are, when, where then are their gods? Are the gods you made for yourselves? Let them come in if they, they can save you when you are in trouble. For you, Judah, have as many gods as you have towns. Why do you bring charges against me? You have all rebelled against me, declares the Lord. In vain I punished your people. They did not respond to correction. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a ravenous lion. You of this generation consider the word of the Lord. Have I been a desert to Israel or a land of great darkness? Why do my people say we are free to roam? We will come to you no more. Does a young woman forget her jewelry, a bride, her wedding ornaments? Yet my people have forgotten me, days without number. How skilled you are at pursuing love. Even the worst of women can learn from your ways. On your clothes is found the lifeblood of the innocent poor, though you did not catch them breaking in. Yet in spite of all this, you say, I am innocent. He is not angry with me. 
but I will pass judgment on because you say I have not sinned. Why do you go about so much changing your ways? You will be disappointed by Egypt as you were by Assyria. You will also leave the, that place with your hands on your head, for the Lord has rejected those who trust, those you trust. You will not be helped by them. Wow, this is long. So there's, then he acknowledges all the letters. Well, I guess it's almost done. So, Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Uh, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in my sight, in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the church of Philadelphia, the angel of the church in Philadelphia writes, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, but you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you, since you have kept my command to endure patiently. I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants inhabitants of the earth and that word keep doesn't mean take away <laughs> it means keep you safe and it means to guard i am coming soon hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown the one who is victorious i will make a pillar in the temple of my god never again will they leave it i will write on them the name of my god and the name of the city of my god the new jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven for my god from my God, sorry, and I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the church in Laodicea, to the angel of the church in Laodicea writes, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other, so because you are lukewarm, neither cold, hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to, to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. 